Terrific tarpon, the Silver King. Wow! This magnificent specimen followed me around on my dive for an extended period of time. It was seemingly curious about my presence. As I dive off of uh, Florida's eastern coastline, I can usually count on seeing the tarpon. And I have to tell you, it's always interesting and it's quite a joy. These fish are impressive. They're big, they're beautiful, and they're seemingly intelligent. I've often perceived them to be curious about me. Or sometimes even annoyed by my presence. Tarpon seem very intelligent. Uh, there just seems to be something going on upstairs. That one. And she looks at you, you can see she's working things out. This one here, of course, was a joy to observe. It hovered above me for different times, uh, for extended periods of time, sometimes swimming away, remaining barely visible. I believe it was curious if I was spearfishing and was waiting to happily relieve me of any catches made. Maybe it was something else. Now, as you can probably tell, I have a soft spot for these beautiful, intelligent animals. The tarpon has a plethora of attributes and characteristics. Jeffy, what is a plethora? Why, Wapo? Well, you told me I have a plethora. And I just would like to know if you know what a plethora is. I would not like to think that a person would tell someone he has a plethora and find out that that person has no idea what it means to have a plethora. Among the plethora of attributes and characteristics that the tarpon has, uh, for one, it is a urehaline fish. Now, just in case you missed the bull shark episode, a urehaline fish is a fish that tolerates fluctuating salinities, often migrating between the ocean and fresh and brackish waters. The tarpon is also tolerant of water with fluctuating pH, as well as water with lower oxygen levels. They're actually pretty resilient, so as long as the water remains warm. Now, I find it very interesting that tarpon are found in Lake Nicaragua in Central America. They actually have to swim up several sets of rapids in the San Juan River to complete their journey to get to Lake Nicaragua. It's really pretty cool. I also find it interesting that the tarpon swim bladder is dual purpose. One, it aids in buoyancy, of course, but two, it also aids in respiration. It's actually kind of like an extra lung. The tarpon can swim to the surface and it takes gulps of air filling its swim bladder. Parts of the swim bladder are coated with thin walled capillaries that are believed to allow the tarpon to increase oxygen levels in its bloodstream, allowing them to tolerate areas with lower levels of oxygen and give themselves extra energy and a predatory advantage. Sometimes the tarpon may be seen rolling at the surface. This behavior is reported to aid in gas exchange, assisting in the release of CO2, carbon dioxide, from the blood. Again, this behavior allows the tarpon to reside in environments with lower oxygen levels, but this necessity requires that they reside near the surface as they are what we call obligate air breathers. This term, obligate air breathers, is a term in fish physiology to describe species that respire from the atmosphere. Hypothetically speaking, if for some reason they could not be near the surface, they would not survive. The 
tarpon are barely visible. Their formation is interesting. Perhaps it's a hunting strategy. They're swimming into the current that is carrying me north. There are three of them that I am able to see, and they are spaced out, but in single file. It causes my imagination to wonder. Sand people always ride single file to hide their numbers. The tarpon are sometimes called silver kings, and of course this seems fitting. Their bodies are covered with shiny, metallic, silvery scales. They have huge mouths that open widely forward, and their eyes are large and covered with adipose eyelids. Adipose eyelids are a special eyelid or transparent lens that covers the tarpon's eye. Besides providing limited protection from objects, the lens may help the tarpon to focus on objects as well as enable the tarpon to see polarized light. The, the lens may also act as a filter removing ultraviolet light, and I speculate that this could be a benefit when attacking prey from below. Tarpon grow up to 8 feet in length and have been recorded to weigh in as much as 355 pounds. Most, if not all, of the specimens in this video are between 4 to 6 feet in length, with perhaps the occasional 7, and I don't think I've ever encountered an 8 footer. Males are smaller and reported to rarely weigh over 100 pounds. The Atlantic tarpon inhabits warm coastal surface waters of tropical and subtropical areas. They've been caught as far north as Nova Scotia and as far south as Argentina, but are more typically found from Virginia to Brazil, the Gulf of Mexico, and throughout the Caribbean. I get to see them all the time here in Florida. Also, they've been found east to Africa, being well represented from Senegal to Angola. Interestingly enough, another lineage of tarpon exists. The Indo-Pacific tarpon, Megalops cypernoides. These are the only two living species of Megalops. Here's a rundown on their classification. Tarpon have a high reproductive output. Their life cycle is also fascinating. In late spring and early summer, tarpon spawn in the open ocean with the female producing up to 12 million eggs at once. Perhaps these schools are spawning aggregations. I observed smaller specimens, likely males, trailing the end, twitching through the group. Tarpon undergo three unique stages in their development. The first stage is the leptocephalus stage, lasting approximately one month. Here the larvae are translucent and eel-like, and they live out in the open ocean. They don't eat, but instead absorb their nutrients from the water. The larvae make their way inshore and shrink in size during a negative growth phase, but by day 70 in their life, stage 3 begins, and the tarpon begins to grow rapidly, consuming small fish, crabs, shrimp, and insects. As they continue to grow, they consume crustaceans and fish by swallowing them whole. When they are approximately three years old, they migrate from brackish and inshore waters to more open areas of the ocean and are reproductively mature at approximately 30 to 50 inches. Small populations of tarpon are in the Pacific near the Panama Canal. Since it was first constructed, small populations and single individuals regularly pass through the canal. Some argue that the fish are established in the Pacific, while I'm under the impression that most authorities believe they've all migrated. Opponents argue that the presence of large adults and small juveniles proves they are established. What say you? 
tarpon are preyed upon by sharks, some cetaceans and crocodilians, as well as humans, although their meat is reported to be of little value. Because of this, their migration patterns have not been widely studied. They are a highly prized game fish known for displaying impressive acrobatics jumping out of the water attempting to throw the hook, but they must be released after they're captured in the state of Florida and most other places. There really isn't a good reason to keep them. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video about the tarpon. I see these beautiful creatures several times a week and I've always found them a treat to see. It's always new, it's always exciting. I enjoy watching them watch me. They seem like thinkers, they're calculating. Very cool. This is Undersea Theater. Please subscribe to this channel and catch the next video coming soon. Thanks a lot.